Korea's semiconductor industry has led the nation's economic progress. We look back on its history and look to the future as we highlight the past 30 years of the semiconductor sector. Korea has entered the era of 11 million foreign tourists. We look at the prospects of the government policy, which is expected to create more new jobs in the tourism industry. ICT technology provides energy efficiency and security control. We find out about the ICT building that uses ICT technology. Soft ice cream that comes out of vending machines? We visit Istro, the makers of the world's first ice cream vending machine. North Korea's representative station, the Korean Central Television. What programs are aired on the Korean Central Television aside from the news? Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to BizLine. Now, I just got back from my summer vacation. How about you? Where are you planning on holidaying this year? If it's South Korea, you should be well catered to because the South Korean government is currently looking at a whole range of measures to upgrade the local tourism sector. We'll be learning what some of those steps are in our interview segment. We'll also be taking a very in-depth look at what is arguably South Korea's most important manufactured product. But before we go to those features, let's begin the show, as always, by taking a look at all the breaking business and economic news hitting the headlines across South Korea this week. Recent economic indicators are raising hopes that the Korean economy will find its way back to recovery in the second half of this year. The Ministry of Strategy and Finance said in its Green Book on Tuesday that the nation's economy is showing positive signs amid stabilizing prices and expanding employment. Sales of imported automobiles hit a new record high here in Korea last month. Data from the Korea Automobile Importers and Distributors Association shows that nearly 15,000 foreign brand cars were sold in July, up nearly 40 percent from the same month last year. German automaker BMW topped the list with over 3,000 units sold, followed by Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz and Audi. Korea's import prices fell for the 11th straight month in July, in another sign of weak inflation. The Bank of Korea said Monday that the nation's import prices dropped 4.3 percent last month from the same period a year earlier. The central bank attributed the drop to the local currency's gain that helped offset higher oil costs. When you think of the term Korean economy, what springs to mind? Is it TVs? Is it computers? Is it mobile devices? Well, all these things are, of course, very significant consumer exports. But at the heart of every one of these devices is the semiconductor, the chip. And it's no exaggeration to say that South Korea's world-beating electronics sector was founded on and around semiconductors. How important a role do chips now play in South Korea's overall economy? Let's take a look. Since the establishment of the South Korean government after liberating from the Japanese colonial rule on August 15, 1945, the country went through much hardships to rebuild the economy. The nation now has diversified industries, but one of the key industries that helped to place Korea on par with other economic heavyweights, and without a doubt, is the semiconductor industry. This year marks the 30th anniversary since South Korea officially entered the memory chips industry with its own technology, succeeding in producing 64K DRAM, Dynamic Random Access Memory, a memory chip that stores quickly accessible data and used mainly in personal computers and workstations. The memory chip industry has grown over the decades and contributes greatly to the country's exports. In the first half of this year, exports of memory chips such as DRAM and NAND flash were the major items that took a big part in the national exports, about 10% of the total 277.6 billion U.S. dollars. Exports of semiconductor industry plays a big role on the national economy as a whole. Uh, 
거의 한 6%에서 한 8% 정도를 차지하고 있습니다. 실질 국가 실질 실 GDP의 한 6%, 6.5%, 한 2010년에 한 6.5% 정도 이렇게 차지하고 있습니다. 그래서 실제적으로 우리 수출, 그 다음에 우리 제조 분야에 아주 중요한 그런 사람이라고 말씀드릴 수 있습니다. The true legend that placed South Korea as the big player in the memory business started when the Samsung Group decided to invest to produce 64K DRAM. 1983년도에 들어서 어, 우리가 진짜 본격적으로 그 현재 반도체라고 일컫는 메모리 부분에 이제 투자가 시작되었습니다. 83년도에 삼성전자 아, 그리고 또 이제 당시 금성, 지금 현재 LG가 있는 금성이 들어갔고 이제 현대전자 3개 기업이 메모리 부분에 투자를 시작했습니다. 1983 was the revolutionary year for Korea for achieving such technology. Not only being able to mass produce DRAM, but also in constructing the facility to supply a memory chip in whole to the global market. But the technology at the time was still four years behind the global competitors, and Samsung and other Korean chip manufacturers continued to invest to catch up with the market leaders in Japan and the U.S. A year later, in 1984, Samsung developed a 256K DRAM, and by 1995, it became the world's first developer in 256 Mega DRAM. South Korean companies were able to achieve such technological breakthrough due to joint efforts made with the Korean government. The 1983년에 반도체 산업 육성 계획, 그 다음에 85년에 반도체 산업 종합 육성 대책, 86년에 초고집적 반도체 기술 공동 개발 사업 이런 것들을 이제 통해서 정부에서 굉장히 그 확고한 지원을 해주었고요. 그 다음에 기업들이 과감한 적기 투자를 했습니다. 그래서 그런 정부하고 기업의 어떻게 보면 혼연 일체가 된 그런 합동적인 전략으로 우리 반도체 산업이 지원까지 성장했다고 봅니다. Now, Samsung and SK Hynix make headlines in the global memory chip market. And their performances can be duly noted in the DRAM sector. Samsung Electrix and SK Hynix rank number one and two in the global market share in DRAM supply. The latest figure shows that Samsung and SK Hynix take about two-thirds of branded and mobile DRAM markets. Korean companies excel not only in DRAM, but also in NAND flash global market, which is an important component in storing memory for portable devices and USB flash drives. Samsung Electronics is the biggest NAND flash supplier, unmatchable by any of its rivals, while SK Hynix also takes a big proportion. 어, 다행히도 이 부분에 대해서는 우리가 또 세계적으로 최고의 기술을 가지고 있고 어, 또 이제 물론 뭐 후발 업계들도 지금 한참 개발을 하고 있습니다만 우리가 이런 부분에 대해서 더 집중적으로 어, 개발하고 또 이를 뒷받침할 수 있는 그런 인력 양성에 힘써야 될 거로 이렇게 생각을 합니다. Earlier in August, Samsung Electronics announced it is producing three-dimensional vertical NAND flash memory, stack layers of data storing silicon, setting the NAND flash technology standard for the immediate future. Samsung전자나 SK Hynix는 시스템 IC 쪽에 지금 현재 그 기술을 어, 강화하고 있기 때문에 그 분야에서도 어, 우리가 마켓 쉐어를 더 늘리게 될것 같고요. 그래서 앞으로 어, 지 현재와 같은 어, 세계 반도체 에, 강국은 어, 앞으로도 지속될 거라고 예상을 하고 있습니다. As the memory chip business remains promising with the advancements of technology, Korea is in the right path to maintain its leadership. Thus, the private and public sectors should continue to cooperate to keep Korea ahead.
It's a little known fact, but the sector, the business sector worldwide, which earns the most revenues is not energy, it's not finance, it's not defence, it is actually leisure and tourism. Yet this is a sector which traditionally has been under-prioritised here in South Korea. Fortunately, that is beginning to change. Last year was a record year for inbound tourism with 11 million foreign visitors visiting these shores. The government wants to increase this number to 16 million and to do so they're enacting a range of policies to achieve this goal. Can this goal be achieved with these policies? These are the questions we'll be asking our guests this week. He's an expert in tourism, having spent 34 years with the Intercontinental Hotel Group uh, in a range of posts worldwide. He's now based in Korea, running his own hotel, hospitality and tourism consultancy. It's called Seas. His name is Didier Beltois. Didier, welcome to Bizline. Thank you. Pleasure to be here today. Okay, well thanks. Let's get straight into this. Now I understand you've uh, created a club, it's called the 5.4 or the 5.4 club, in order to sort of promote the beauty of Korea and promote tourism into Korea. Tell me about this club. Well, what does it do? You know, now we have been, you know, receiving over 11 million visitors to Korea and certainly the time is ripe to be uh, promoting further the four world of Korean culture. The four roads Road of, of Korean, Korean culture. culture. Okay. So what we call the four, four road of Korean culture, it's you know, basically in Korean, uh, looking at a, uh, playing with the word Sakori, means you know, crossroad. Mm. So it does mean you know, looking at the four elements you know, of you know, Korea uh, and Korean culture, which is what you know, to, uh, to eat, mok curry, okay. what to see, pool curry, okay. what to relax and to enjoy, chigul curry, and finally, what to talk about, yigul curry. Okay. So that was, you know, the definition, you know, of the, of the four. Five, looking at the five senses, because that's the best way to enjoy Korea throughout our five senses. Okay, well, let's move on to Korea much more broadly. Um, in your point of view, you know, what actually makes Korea a tourism destination? What are its sort of core competences? I think when we look at Korea, yeah. it has an history, it has a culture, mm. it has an heritage which, you know, uh, which certainly, you know, is fascinating and insufficiently known. It has an environment as well. You have the course, you have the countryside, you have the hill, you have some small mountains, you know, and you can do a lot, but, you know, Korea is not known where, you know, when you look at the growth of Korea, there's never been a focus, there's never been a commitment from the government to support tourism. It always has been technology and yeah. all the, you know, manufacturing. derivative, sure. manufacturing, you know, first, then technology, biotechnology. So now, I'm certainly extremely happy to hear and see that, you know, the present government under Mrs. Parkone is taking tourism as a, a, pri a, a measure um, priority. As you said it, it is the number one industry in the world, employing the largest number of people. I mean, one other issue, I uh, was speaking to, to my producer earlier on, he says, you know, I can't really take my full vacation because we Koreans uh, are almost programmed to, to work too hard. So the local tourism industry, does it really get the numbers it should from the local population? Should you also be promoting Korean tourism to Koreans? I think that certainly, uh, and being it beginning, uh, now that it is a priority, I think we should be seeing, and I feel very confident, that we're going to see much more focus domestically, where, you know, the government will be look addressing, encouraging, facilitating as well for the local governments or th small village, you know, places where there is something to, to see and, and appreciate, they will be supporting them to do some, um, take some initiative and create, you know, something much more attractive. Mm. So it will be automatically inviting, you know, Korean to spend more time within the country, appreciating it more, discovering what, you know, the, the, the beauty of it, rather than going overseas mm. always. Okay, I mean, let me, let me put you more on the spot. Is the issue facing Korean tourism more about the consumer, that South Koreans are not major consumers of, of tourism products, or is it the suppliers, they haven't really got the products right yet? I think, you know, Koreans are relatively high consumers, because in a few days, they spend quite a big 
amount of money they want to enjoy, they want to appreciate. And those few days are really, you know, um, probably spending more than some other people will be uh, spending in the same period of time. So it's more that what are the other alternatives? Uh, you see that everybody is going to Pusan, to Yonde Beach, you know, right. with large crowd. Yeah, right. yeah. This is the last place I want to go well, like because one. it's too crowded. Yeah. I want to go to some more places, some other places which may be, you know, not as attractive, but offering a certain level of comfort, you know, on, and culture, which, you know, uh, can help us, or help, you know, to, to relax and to enjoy, and not always being, you know, living soul to find another location where basically you have the same situation. So more diversification, sure. Today, recently, the government has put out a range of measures to uh, increase the number of foreign visitors. These include um, reimbursing additional tax on hotel lodging fees for foreigners, um, issuing multiple entry visas for uh, tourists from China and Southeast Asia, allowing foreigners to own condominiums. Now, how do you see these measures and what does the industry mm -hmm. think? Is this enough to suck in a larger number of mm -hmm. foreign tourists? I think those measures are very positive already uh, and the industry has been uh, fairly uh, appreciating on those uh, measures taken by the government. Uh, I mean, certainly, you know, putting, you know, additional security, uh, developing, giving, you know, a uh, break, a tax break, can only, you know, drive, you know, the people. Uh, but I think it's important as well to look at uh, some other element, because what do we want? We want to increase, you know, to 16 million, yeah. which is fine. Where are we going to get, you know, those visitors from? We have to be realistic. It can only come, you know, from within the region. The majority will come, you know, from China. Um, Japan has always been stable, although, you know, lately we have seen substantial drop due to the uh, the, the weekend, value of the yeah. yen, uh, the political situation, mm. and the the tension is not helping at all. So, the growth will be coming mainly from China and from some South, South, Southeast Asian countries uh, where we see Taiwan, you know, with over 50,000 visitors, I think Indonesia about 19, 20,000, uh, Thailand a bit less. Uh, so the growth will be there, but mainly, mainly from China. Now, from the Chinese market, what are we going to attract? Are we going to attract a valuable tourist or are we going to attract, you know, mass? and, you know, groups, and what will be, you know, their uh, spending uh, impact on the, uh, on the, on the, for the country and for tourism. If you look at, you know, the, the pattern of spending for the Japanese, the Japanese, they want to have a good experience, they want to have good food, they want to have good accommodation, and they want to feel very secure and safe. The Chinese, and they do, of course, a bit of, uh, of, uh, of buying, um, purchasing, and uh, going through the, the, the uh, opportunity the country has. The Chinese, the main focus and priority has been on shopping. Shopping is the key things. And then came, you know, food and accommodation. Now, shopping, what do they buy? They buy products which are imported, which, you know, are quite often luxury product. So that's one of the concerns I, 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 I would have. Uh, the second thing is looking at the mass, you know, which is great because it drives, you know, some volume. But, you know, we need to develop and put some measures as well to attract, you know, the repetitive traveler. So the person came, you know, to Korea with a different perspective, with a perspective of understanding, appreciating element of the culture. And that's where, you know, it's critical that action's being taken as well. So when the people are coming back, they go with something specific, they're interested, and those people will be usually the much high-end uh, traveler. Gotcha. Now, what you're talking about the, uh, the Chinese market being the, uh, the obvious growth market for Korean tourism, and of course the Chinese famously do like to gamble. Now, very restrictive uh, uh, regulation here in Korea on casinos out of the nations. I think 17 casinos, only one is open to Korean tourists, the rest are foreigner only. Um, and there's now some question about whether casinos should even be allowed on cruise ships uh, uh, traveling around Korea. Um, do you think Korea needs to uh, take a new look at its casino regulation? Mm -hmm. I think looking at more the integrated resort, 
because when you yeah. look at Macau or you look at Las Vegas, we're talking about yeah. integrated resort and not talking about casino. Mm. Those are very positive elements because an integrated resort are encompassing a great experience for staying, relaxing, entertainment, shopping. Um, of course, you know, gambling is a little part of it. So this brings, you know, tourism. And I think Las Vegas, you know, have, you know, close to 30 million. Yeah. Why, you know, Macau, uh, we're talking about 50 million people visiting on a yearly basis. But why do people go to Macau as well? Mm. Not only for gambling, they go, you know, to experience something different and to have a bit of fun. Now, when we look at, you know, this cruise, what are we going to attract? Are we going to attract the high-end traveler? I have a bit my doubt. I used to be working in the Philippines, and I recall, you know, casino boat uh, outside of the harbor, because there is outside the territorial mm. water, was attracting a lot of people, but which were not people spending money in e every single other element, which can be of contrib contributing to improve, you know, the economy. They were simply gambling, and the experience was rather appalling. So I hope, you know, it's not going to be in that direction. But something else will be created. Because at the end of the day, if you want to drive and bring people back to the country, the cultural element has to be part of it. Gotcha. Okay. The experience has to be, you know, something that you want to talk about it. Hence, you know, the objective and the purpose we're trying to do with 5-4 Club gotcha. is to really, you know, creating through the four uh, road of culture, something that people will talk about, will appreciate, and, and eventually we'll come back for. We'll come yeah. back for. Gotcha. Um, we've talked about the, the end user. Let's talk about the supplier. Um, you consult to foreign hotels and foreign resorts who might be interested in establishing a career. Um, what kind of issues do they face? What does a foreign hotel or resort operator want from the local market? I think, you know, there's a combination of elements. One is the commitment and the support from the government. So now it's something which, you know, hopefully will be coming. The second was the Korean ways tend to be more looking at the immediate fast return. You have an investment, how long, how fast you're going to, uh, to get your, your, your return. Yes, it is, you know, uh, the way of doing business, but in tourism, you have to look at a much longer perspective. Uh, and I will give you an example. If you look at, you know, Thailand, where they are today, I remember I used to be living in Thailand, you know, in the mid 80s. Mm. And that was at the time, you know, where the government decided that it was going to be one of their priority. So at the time, they involve, you know, they, they, uh, they, they form, you know, some groups, they involve, you know, every single partners to make sure that they were listening and participating in the consensus. So it came to a situation where we know what has been happening now in Thailand, but going back, at the time, he was, you know, a collective yeah. movement where everybody felt, you know, there was something which was of interest, which was supported, and there would be a win-win situation for everybody. Not looking at the long term, because it was clearly stated the infrastructure was not there, we had to be building up. But there was a commitment and a vision and a complete involvement from every single partner. Every and single partner, critical. I mean every part of government or including Including the players? trade, you know, the, all the foreign players. Yeah. Uh, everybody who was related to tourism was involved. Does that uh, kind of talking shop exist in South Korea today? Uh, I think there's certainly some improvement required there. Mm, yeah. uh, and I've seen, you know, I was in, uh, in Canada as well, it was the same story where in one stage during the economic crisis, you know, in the early 90s in Montreal, we had a disastrous situation. But under, you know, the, uh, the uh, Montreal Tourism uh, Board, you know, every single partner was involved and we were meeting regularly and working on committees, sharing, you know, initiative, taking advantage of the knowledge and the expertise from everybody coming from all over the world, sharing what were the best practices. And Montreal afterwards became an amazing, you know, destination mm. for mice market. Let's move. Sort of towards more the local end of things. Now, t leisure and tourism is the perfect sector for a small businessman or entrepreneur to get involved in. It's very easy to open mm. a restaurant, a small hotel, a tour operation, whatever it may be. Mm. Um, what kind of small niche sectors do you think are unfilled in Korea? What might a young Korean who wants to be involved in leisure and tourism uh, consider starting up? Mm. Well, I 
looking at the potential with all the growth coming up, which will be coming from the Chinese yeah. market, is going to be an amazing pole. But I think the last thing is to do is to say, there is an opportunity, let's open a restaurant. Let's take an case in a, yeah. in a restaurant. Let's open a restaurant. There's so many restaurants. How different are you going mm -hmm. to be? What are you going to offer? Which, which market do you target? Not everybody will have the same aspiration. So my advice is, like any business, understand where you are, where you want to go, and how you're going to make that happening. And be you know, patient, because tourism is not something you have a fast return. It's something you build up, you invest, you grow, you mature, and then it becomes certainly very interesting. Okay. Didier, you're, you're a Frenchman. France is, I understand, the most visited tourism destination or nation on earth. Um, um, what niches do you think uh, remain to be filled in Korea? I was in France myself a couple of weeks ago, came across a tour bus doing a wine tasting tour around, uh, around Provence. Now clearly Korea doesn't have a wine industry but it does have, say, Makali. What are some areas that, that perhaps Korea or Koreans have not yet exploited that they could do? Mm. Well, again what I'm saying, yeah. try to understand where your strengths, what are the, what, what are, you know, the values that you know, the country have. And based on that, look at it and develop it. The wine tours is something that, I mean, has not been so long in, in, in France. Mm. It used to be, you know, for privileged people yeah. going and expert. But, you know, it's something which has been growing because they realize now, yeah. it's now it's really, uh, not yet on the mass market, but it's quite popular that, yeah. and something. So there's not only that, as you said, there's some other things, you know, to ring in other flowers, the perfumes in the south the part of France, right, right. you know, that's another thing. So what are, you know, the unique elements that Korea has? And looking at those elements, you have, you know, ginseng, for example. Can something be done with around the ginseng? Health, uh, it's something which is a preoccupation for everybody. So can we some do something different? I'm sure there is opportunities. People need to think, what is unique? What is, you know, special? Because tourists, when they get, you know, out of you know, a group traveling, mm. they want to discover something and they're curious. And you have constantly to drive curiosity and interest. If you don't drive those elements, people will not come back. Got you. Simply. Sounds to me like you're saying that Korea really needs to find its points of differentiation, but also take advice from perhaps uh, foreign companies which have wider experience in, in the sector. Thank you very, very much for being with us on Thank Bizline. You very much. Fascinating stuff. Thank Gideon. you. Thank you. We're all familiar with the ICT built into our smart devices. What about our architecture. Currently, ICT is being incorporated into buildings at the construction stage, thereby improving building management, efficiency and convenience. Moreover, it's now very much the sweaty season. These intelligent buildings, by optimizing their energy usage and management, can keep their inhabitants as cool as possible. How do they do it? Let's take a look. Lighting, temperature and humidity levels change automatically in accordance with the owner's condition. And such a smart house with an intelligent automation system is no longer an imaginary one. Let's explore smart buildings getting more intelligent through incorporation with ICT technologies in the real world. The building automation system managing the building environment unmanned through a controlling center has become a critical part of a large size building. With growing demand for efficient energy use and strict security systems, the number of smart buildings with the cutting-edge ICT-based building automation system has increased. According to Pike Research, a global clean tech market research and consulting firm, the market for commercial building automation systems is forecast to grow to 146.4 billion US dollars by 2021, from 72.5 billion US dollars in 2011 in value. The smart building에 포함되는 서비스라고 하면 뭐 사무 자동화 그리고 어, 주차 관리 그 다음에 설비 제어 그리고 건물의 어떤 특정한 화재라든지 뭐 지진 같은 게 이제 발생했을 때는 재난 관리 등도 포함이 되겠습니다. 
This is the office building in downtown Seoul that reduced its energy consumption by 15 percent last year from the average energy usage in previous years, thanks to a cloud-based building energy management system that was implemented in the building last year. BEMS란 건물의 에너지 소비 현황을 그 전체 에너지 그 다음에 용도별 층별 설비별 이런 식으로 이제 체계적으로 이제 분석을 해서 에너지가 낭비되고 있는 부분이 없는지 이렇게 이제 찾아내고요. 또 이제 각종 설비들이 있습니다. 냉동기라든지 공조기, 보일러 이런 이제 설비들의 각종 설비들의 가동 시간, 설비의 성능, 그 다음에 어떤 운전 온도 등을 종합적으로 분석을 해서 에너지 절감 방안을 찾아내는 건물 에너지 관리 시스템이 되겠습니다. About 1,500 sensors are installed in the cooling and heating systems, boilers, and ventilation systems to monitor and measure energy consumption in this building. When an employee swipes an ID badge over the sensor after coming to work, lighting in the employee's desk area are automatically turned on. When he or she leaves the office, they are turned off automatically. This system allows building managers to monitor power consumption, including waste energy, at a glance in a real time. 저희가 벤스 기술을 도입하고 그 조명 제어라든지 아니면 뭐 층별 뭐 에너지 분석 등을 통해서 어연 1억 정도의 에너지 절감 효과를 거뒀습니다. And data collected from the sensors is sent to a cloud-based BEMS controlling center for analysis of energy usage patterns to remove power waste factors and optimize energy consumption. 종합 운영 센터에서 모든 건물들을 다 이제 관리를 하다 보니까 서로 건물 간의 비교를 통해서 어떤 건물이 에너지 낭비 요인이 있고 어떤 건물이 에너지를 효율적으로 쓰고 있는지 비교를 할수 있고요. 그걸 통해서 좀뭐 효율 적인 건물을 벤치마킹 해 가지고 에너지를 절감할 수 있도록 그렇게 유도를 하고 있습니다. This is another smart building in Gangnam-gu, Seoul. The exterior of the building doesn't look special at all, but the building is fortified with tight security systems. Different security levels are set for each floor or section in this building. Doors of certain areas are open to employees selectively. After their authorities are confirmed through information sent to a controlling center from an NFC tag on the doors reading employees' badges. 관제 센터랑은 네트워크 망을 통해서 연결이 돼 있고요. 어, 저희 이동 전화 망으로도 무선으로 관제가 가능해서 여러 가지 다방면에서 관제가 가능하고요. 만약에 그한 선이 뭐한 라인이 좀뭐 죽다든지 뭐 외부 이런 불순 그러니까 침입자에 의해서 절단이 되게 되면 자동으로 또 백업 망을 구성하게 돼 있어서. 그 외에 이제 망으로 또 우회적인 통신도 가능하게 구성이 돼 있습니다. Cars access to a parking lot in the building is also checked. When trespassing is detected, bollards are automatically lifted from the ground to block and damage the car breaking in to prevent any terrorist attacks. Smart buildings are getting more intelligent with automated monitoring and controlling systems. 그 스마트 빌딩이라고 한다는 거는 이제 건물에서 일어나는 다양한 그런 사용자의 활동을 계속 모니터링 하는 게 필요하거든요. 사용자 정보를 습득을 해야 되는 경우에는 이제 개인정보 유출이라고 하는 부분도 문제가 될수 있습니다. 그런 맞춤형 서비스를 제공하기 위해서 개인의 동의를 구한다든지 뭐 이런 절차가 필요할 수 있는 거죠. The future of the smart building is bright if protection of personal information is guaranteed. And with further advances in technologies, building management systems that could respond to five senses will likely be developed in the near future. 사람의 행동 혹은 감정의 변화까지 스스로 알아서 공간을 환경을 조절할 수 있는 그런 건물이 되어야 되지 않나 생각을 합니다. 인간이 느끼는 그런 오감이라고 하는 거에 대응을 해서 거기에 맞춰서 이제 스스로. 환경을 변화하고 조절해야 된다라는 거죠. 그런 공간이 된다면 아마도 진정한 의미의 스마트 빌딩에 가까워지지 않을까 그렇게 생각을 합니다. Buildings have become smarter than ever as architecture meets ICT technology. And such smart buildings are expected to be developed as more human-friendly space in the future with further advances in technologies.
If you're watching the show in South Korea, you will know it is absolutely sweltering outside. If you're not watching it from South Korea, let me assure you, the streets of Gangnam right now are hotter than the surface of the sun. In this kind of weather, the best thing to do, of course, is to hit a tropical beach. If you don't have a tropical beach available to you, and I don't, the next best thing is, of course, an ice cream. Currently, you don't have to buy your ice cream from a shop. You can actually get this stuff from a vending machine on the street. Now, the maker of the world's first ice cream vending machine is a Korean company. But if we buy our ice creams on the street, should we be concerned about hygiene? Let's meet this week's hidden champion. During summer season, the sun is at its strongest, letting out intense heat waves. People sweat without much activity, as temperatures remain high for a long period of time, and the best way to cool down is to have an ice cream. Anywhere you go, whether it's Korea or abroad, you will notice that the ice cream making machines are mostly made in Korea. We will highlight the success story of one ice cream machine maker, which has succeeded in the global market. Ice cream stores are in peak season during the summer months. We visited one ice cream store busy with customers. People cool down with a bite of the smooth, soft ice cream. For a moment, they forget the heat. One particular machine makes ice cream automatically, without manual functions. The machine is able to maintain ideal temperature and a freezing system needed to make the perfect ice cream. The special ice cream machine is created with Korean technology, which has gained global recognition. 아이스크림 기기와 같은 식품 냉동 기기는 설계 그리고 또 제조가 매우 까다롭습니다. 맛있어야 되고 인체 유해에서는 안 되고 그렇기 때문에 그 제조 온도가 정밀하게 제어해 되어야 되고 또 살균 기능도 필요하게 됩니다. 이를 위해서는 많은 기술적 노하우가 필요하고 그래서 세계 시장으로의 진출이 쉽지 않은 그런 분야입니다. Istro is a freezing machinery specializing company that is popular at home and abroad. Istro grew as a company for the past 30 years, starting in the domestic market, where at first the right technology to make freezing appliances did not exist. Throughout the years, the company manufactured and sold ice machines, ice cream, and slush machines. 95년 최초 개발 당시에는 국내에서는 제빙기 아이스크림 등은 100% 수입에 의존하고 있었습니다. 문제는 수요는 증가하는데 100% 수입에 의존하다 보니 가격이 굉장히 비쌌던 거죠. 그래서 저희가 개발에 착수하였고요. Istro's representative machinery, the soft ice cream maker, implements artificial intelligence with an ideal freezing system. These are key in creating the perfect taste for its ice cream, made from the unique scientific technology of Istro. 아이스크림에서 가장 중요한 것이 맛이라고 생각합니다. 이 맛은 아이스크림 내부에 공기 함유율이 어느 정도 유지가 되어 있는지 그에 따라서 아이스크림 맛이 결정되는데 이것을 바로 오버런이라고 합니다. 이 오버런을 자유자재로 구성시키기 위해서 이 제품 내부에는 인버터가 들어가 있습니다. 이 인버터로 하여금 실린더 내부에서 아이스크림을 생산시키는 과정 중에서 RPM을 마음껏 변화시켜서 고객들로 하여금 다양한 맛의 아이스크림을 만들 수 있도록 하는 그 기술을 구현시키는 제품이 되겠습니다. Hygiene is key in making ice cream, which is a dairy product, and this is the reason why the ice cream machine has a low temperature sterilization function that allows the ingredients to maintain freshness for a longer period of time. 좋은 살균 기능이라는 것은 아이스크림을 65도에서 68도까지 30분간 유지 가열시키는 기능으로서 이 좋은 살균 기능을 이용을 하면 아이스크림 내부에 있는 유해한 균들을 멸균시킬 수 있습니다. 
Many stores prefer Istro ice cream makers because it's easy to use and makes the ideal soft ice cream that satisfies customers' taste buds with speed. 다른 소프트 아이스크림보다 더 진하고 맛이 부드러운 것 같습니다. 어린이들이나 아니면 젊은 층 분들이 많이 찾고 있는데 여기 가게 주변이 거의 직장인들이 많이 있는 곳이라서 직장인 분들이 소프트 아이스크림을 많이 찾고 있습니다. Istro machines are placed at thousands of stores around the country, like convenience stores, coffee shops and ice cream stores, mainly because the machine is easy to use and backed by the best technology. The Istro machines are seen in stores around the world, which is proof of Korea's technology advancement. The automatic soft ice cream maker developed by Istro's technology is one of a kind in the world, which is shifting trends in the global market trend. Ice cream 자동 판매기는 그동안 선진국의 유수한 경쟁사에서도 개발을 하기 위한 시도가 있었습니다. 그러나 살균 기능이나 정량 투출 문제, 위생이나 관리적인 측면에서 상용하지는 못했죠. 그 제품을 저희가 최초로 개발한 것입니다. Domestic and overseas buyers have shown great interest over the soft ice cream machine that pumps out fresh ice cream automatically for 24 hours by inserting a coin. Istro exports to some 80 countries around the world, rising to the top from a country where freezing technology was practically non-existent. Sales have skyrocketed along with rising popularity of the automotive ice cream maker, creating expectations for a surplus for the company Istro. 그 네아콘 냉장고 외에도 제빙기, 아이스크림 같은 그런 식품 냉동 기기 분야에서도 이제는 국내 시장을 넘어서 세계 시장을 선도하는 기술을 그렇게 가지고 있다고 말씀드릴 수 있겠습니다. Cell phones, semiconductors and displays are a list of products that have become a symbol of Korea's industrial success. There is one more item to add on the list. It's the ice cream maker that provides great tasting ice cream. The ice cream machine is now among Korea's best technological achievements. Now, personally, I'm still a great reader, but I'd imagine for most people around the world, their main source of information and entertainment is the television. And this is equally true of North Koreans as it is for the rest of us in other countries. Much of the information we get about North Korea comes from its hardline TV news broadcasts. But Korean Central TV, the nation's only TV station, has a whole range of programming unrelated to news. What can we learn about North Korean people and society from their television programming? Let's take a look. A stentorian voice, emphatic tone, and upright posture of the newscaster. This is the scene that represents the 50-year-old Korean Central Television, or KCTV. However, there is more to North Korea's state-run TV network than just the impressive anchor woman. According to KCTV's weekly schedule in March 2010, the telecast was mainly composed of propaganda, news, and entertainment programs. Propaganda shows have upheld the personality cult of the Kim family by documenting the daily activities and various works by the leaders, and focusing on the history and achievements of the party and the army. As for the newscasts, only selected facts are presented in a certain manner. For example, any actions deemed unfavorable to the North Korean regime are strongly condemned, while negative reports on domestic issues are rarely seen. News라든지 시사적인 것들도 어쨌든 뭐 어떤 문제점을 지적하고 이런 것보다는 북한의 정책이라든지 이런 것들을 홍보 전달하는 기능이 제일 크다고 봐야 되겠고. 
뭐 김일성 김정일 관련된 문건들 이런 것들을 교육시키는 부분들이 있고 큰 틀에서는 이런 그 정치적 그 교양이라고 얘기하는데 이 선전선동이 메인이라고 좀 봐야 될것 같고요. Contrary to many people's expectations, what stands out in the TV schedule is entertainment making up more than a quarter of the KCTV broadcast. Television 연속극이 그래서 한 시간 10분, 한 시간 15분 정도 매일 저녁. 근데 그거는 사상이 없어요. 김일성, 김정일이가 등장하지 않아요. 지금도 새로운 텔레비전 연속극이 나오면 그걸 제일 좋아하지. 뭐 보도나 이런 걸 크게 흥미롭지 않아요. Other programs that draw the attention of North Koreans are music and quiz shows. 학생들이 쭉 앉혀놓고서는 학생들 한테 무슨 문제를 내면 그 맞추고 그뭐못 맞추는 사람 또 탈락 돼 나가고 뭐 이렇게 하잖아요. 교과서에 나오는 문제라든가 상 일반적으로 알아야 될 상식적 문제를 내 제시하고 그걸 맞추는가 못 맞추는가에 따라서 일등 이등을 나누고 뭐 그렇게. 일요일마다 여청 무대라는 걸 해요. 전시 가요들이 많았어요. 근데 그때 노래들이 따라 부르기가 쉬워요. 뭐 그런 노래가 나오게 되면 정말 좋은 거예요. 지금 막그 살아가기가 힘든 그 생각들이 조금씩 없어져요. 자 다시 저때로 좀 돌아갔으면. Rare but sports coverage and magic shows also delight the eyes of North Korean viewers. Another noticeable thing is the absence of TV ads, except for one time when a commercial for North Korean beer was experimentally aired three times in July 2009. 그런 사회주의에서 그런 광고 방송 뭐 신문에도 광 광고 부분이 없는가 마찬가지로 없기 때문에 그 어떤 그 프로그램 중간 중간을 잘라준다는 의미에서 조금 조금 조금한 뭐 소식이라든지 뭐 간단한 프로그램 뭐 이런 것들이 좀 들어가는 걸로 알고 있습니다. Even the smallest inserts in the KCTV broadcast are strictly controlled by the propaganda and agitation department of the Workers' Party, which oversees all North Korean media. Every finished product must go through a very strict screening process. Last September, the KCTV underwent a major facelift. A background LCD panel was introduced in the newscast where live images are played. And over the past few years, North Korea has been making efforts to upgrade the quality to accommodate the fast changing tastes of its viewers. 김정은이 들어선 다음에 바뀌는 게 여러 가지가 많은데, 그 중에 아까 말씀드렸듯이 좀 인민하고 가까운 스킨십 강조하고, 그 아이들 얘기 많이 나온다든지, 그 다음에 일상적인 얘기가 많이 나온다든지 뭐 이런 식으로 와서 좀 바뀌고 있고 뭐 영화도 많이 편성을 하고 있고 좀 드라마라든지 조금 어 일종의 대중의 눈높이를 맞추려는 좀 시도를 많이 하고 있지만 근데 내용 자체가 조금 그게 흥미롭지 않기 때문에 과거에 비해서는 영향력 많이 떨어진 것 같습니다. KCTV is losing its ground. Not only as the North's entertainment provider. But more importantly, as one of the most effective political propaganda media outlets that it had once been. And that's all we have time for this week. But do stay with us and join us next week, because next week is something of a landmark. The Park and Hay administration will be entering its sixth month in office. So we'll be assessing the Park Administration's business, economic and North Korean policies. So stay with us. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was BizLine. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.